Now I want to look at the case. If I don't have the y-intercept, how can I still write an equation of the line? So, first example. Find an equation of the line with slope 3. I'm just going to write down our information that's given. That contains the point 4, 1. So our first question is, is this a y-intercept? No, because my first coordinate is not 0, it's a 4. So this is just some other point that the line is going through. So we can't plug that information directly into our slope-intercept form. Okay, because although I do have this value, my 1 is not the b value, because this isn't the y-intercept. So, how are we going to get around that? So let's just plug in the information that we do know. Slope is 3. So I know the equation of the line has a form close to this, but we need to figure out where the y-intercept is happening. What b value do we need? So the only other piece of information that we were given is a random point that it's going through. So what does this give us? I have an x value. When I plug in 4 for x, what do I get out for y? 1. So I can plug those in, fill in these two unknowns, and solve for this unknown. So I know that I get 1 out for y when I plug in 4 for x. Now it's an equation in one variable that we can solve for. Solve for b. 1 is equal to 12 plus b, so I need to subtract 12 from both sides. So b is equal to minus 11. So we can figure out the y-intercept if we're given the slope and some other point that it's going through. So again, we know this piece of information now. Let's plug it into our equation. The equation of this line is 3x minus 11. So now we could tell, where's the y-intercept happening at? 0, negative 11. What is the slope looking like? Positive 3, increasing pretty steeply from left to right. So let's do another one. Slope of the line with, <laughs> the slope of the line, find the equation of the line with slope, negative 5. That contains the point minus 2, 3. So again, we don't have the y-intercept, but we do have some pieces of information. I know that my slope is negative 5. I don't know the b-value, but I do know that when I plug in minus 2 for x, I get out 3 for y. So we're solving for this unknown. Negative times a negative gives us a positive 10 right here. So b is going to be 3 minus 10, which is minus 7. And again, we solved for that one piece that we didn't have, so we'll plug it back in. Equation of this line, y equals negative 5x minus 7. So find an equation of the line that contains the given points and has the given slope. Take those two. Tell me what equations we're dealing with. First one, again, plug in the information that we know. I know the slope. I don't know the y-intercept. But I know that when I plug in 4 for x, I get out 2 for y. So we can solve for b. 5 times 4 gives me 20 plus b. b is equal to 2 minus 20 when I subtract 20 from both sides. So b is minus 18. And again, we need to plug in the last piece of information. So the equation of that line is 5x minus 18. Slope is 5, increasing from left to right pretty rapidly. And it's crossing through the lower half of the plane. The y-intercept happens at 0 minus 18. The last one, again, plug in the information you know. Solve for the unknown. When I plug in 1 for y and minus 2 for x, I know it's going through that line. Negative times a negative gives me a positive 6. So b is equal to minus 5. Again, plug it back in. Last piece. The line looks like minus 3x minus 5. What do you notice about the next example? We want to find an equation of the line containing the points 
2, 3, minus 2, 2. So we're given two points, and we don't have any information about the slope or the y-intercept. We just have two random points that the line is going through. So can we take those two points and figure out some of that information? We can figure out the slope, because for the slope, what do we need? Difference between the y's over difference between the x's. And we have two points, 2, 3, and minus 2, 2. So we can figure out the slope, and then I have two points to choose from for anchoring and figuring out where my y-intercept is. So let's figure out the slope. Difference between the y's, I'm going to pick this one first. y2 minus y1. I took from this one first, so I need to choose the x-coordinate first, x2 minus x1. Minus a minus is going to give us a plus. So we're looking at one-fourth for our slope. So what do we know? I know the slope, don't know the y-intercept. But I have two choices for points to plug in, for x and y to figure out b. Either one doesn't matter, it's still going through they're both still going through the line. So, I'm going to pick the easier of the two, the ones that are both positive. So when I plug in 2 for x, I get out 3 for y. And I can solve for that unknown. So what do we get here? I've got 3 is equal to 2 goes into 4 2 times plus b. So b is equal to 3 minus a half. So we need common denominators to be able to uh, subtract those. So b is going to be equivalent to what? So I need a denominator of 2 over here, so I need to multiply by 2 over 2, which is 6 halves minus 1 half. So b is looking at 5 halves. Again, that's our y-intercept, so we want to plug that last piece of information in and tell of our line. Equation of the line is y equals 1 fourth x plus 5 halves. So even if we don't have all the information necessary, if we still have some other pieces, we can gather what we need and present the equation of that line. So take those next two examples. Find an equation of a line containing 2, 4, and 5, 3. And then a separate line, find the equation of a line containing the points minus 1, 2, minus 3, minus 2. First example, we needed to find the slope first. So we're looking for the difference between the y's over a difference between the x's. So we're looking at 1 over minus 3 for the first slope. So again, we know that one piece of information, y equals minus 1 third x plus b. I still need b. It's unknown. I can choose either of these points to plug in. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose the first one. And I know the y value. It was 4. And what was our x value associated to that? 2. So again, fractions, but we can deal with it. So I'm looking at 4 is equal to minus 2 thirds plus b. So what does that tell me? b is going to be equal to 4 plus 2 thirds. So how can I rewrite 4 with a denominator of 3? I'm looking at 12 thirds plus 2 thirds, which gives me 14 thirds. So the equation of that line, y equals negative 1 third x plus 14 thirds. We know where the y-intercept is happening at, and the slope. It's decreasing from left to right, and it's pretty puny. It's pretty small. Not going at a fast rate. Next one, same story. We need the slope. We have two pieces of information. We need a little bit more. So, difference between the y's. y2 minus y1. So, it'll be a plus in there. Chose from this one first. x2 minus x1. So 2 plus 2 gives me 4. And I have minus 1 plus 3. So what are we looking at there? 2. So in reality, my slope was 2. 
So we know that one piece, 2x plus b. I have two different choices for x and y values to plug in to solve for that unknown. I'm going to plug in the first. So I got 2 for y, when I plugged in, minus 1 for x. So 2 is equal to a negative 2 plus b. Therefore, b is equal to what value? 4. So the equation of that line, y equals, what was our slope? 2x plus 4. So we're increasing from left to right, and uh, the line is crossing the y-axis in the upper half plane, since it's positive. So to find an equation of a line, what do we need? In all these different cases, we had different pieces of information. So, before, first video, what did we have? One point, whether it was the special y-intercept or not, or a random one, and what else? Slope. That'll get us there, because we can plug in the point, figure out the unknown y-intercept if it's not given. Or in these cases, what else did we need? We started just with two points. Two points, and we figured out the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation of the line. 